So what is up guys? I went back to the iPhone 8 Plus for like 72 hours and in this video I kind of want to share with you experience that I had with this phone. It was pretty good and not so great at the same time. So let's talk about what happened after I went back to the iPhone 8 Plus for 72 hours. Now going back to this older style phone, after experiencing all these edge touch phones, especially that OnePlus 7 Pro, if you have ever tried a newer 18 by nine or 19 five nine display, these edge touch panels, going back to an eight plus just kind of feels like you're in 2014, to be quite honest, but with the internals of a modern day smartphone. So I still really like the internals on the iPhone eight plus. So the iPhone eight plus being, you know, a familiar design makes it somewhat boring, but to the techie person, it would be rather boring, but it's familiar, but boring. I think for techies though, you probably don't want this phone anymore right here, unless you just wanna try an iPhone, you want good internals, and you find it used from somebody who's like selling it or a family member is giving it away, then it'll be great. But I think if you're to buy a phone right now, there's probably better options if you really like design, you know, modern feel, stuff like that, including things like the Pixel 3 AXL. Okay, so one of the great things that's still awesome about the iPhone 8 Plus is that it still does this, rotates. Now, the iPhone XS Max doesn't do that. 6.5 inch versus 5.5 inch display. And uh, what this contributes to is the iPhone 8 Plus, you like that? The iPhone 8 Plus feeling more like a little iPad mini. As a matter of fact, I use the iPad mini and I use the 8 Plus. And when I come down to this, this is basically the mini version. So if you like the iPad mini, you absolutely adore the 8 Plus. Now, in addition, this phone also feels relatively wide. You can see side to side, this phone is a very wide phone, so that I didn't enjoy too much in my 72 hour challenge that I did with this phone prior to getting OnePlus 7. Just a very wide phone and extremely heavy for a 5.5 inch phone. I mean, phones that are 6.5 inches weigh about the same as the A+. So this is a weighty phone, but some people associate that substantial feeling with uh, a great phone. So if you think it's substantial, if you think that makes it premium, that it's heavy, you'll love the A+. But for me, wide, heavy, and uh, it does have a great landscape mode though. So there's some things I noticed in this little challenge I did with this phone. I really, really liked about the A Plus is the True Tone display and the LCD panel. Now, I know OLED screens are amazing, curved panels are amazing, but the LCD screen feels a lot like the iPad Pro screen being LCD, the iMac screen. So, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, you use those products MacBook Pro, iMac, or an iPad. The A Plus feels a lot more like a traditional, you know, LCD screen like you'll find on those products. So it fits in very nicely, even though it doesn't have an OLED screen. Discussing the software with the iPhone A Plus, to be honest with you, what it felt like in this little challenge is just a little bit different. How you swipe the control center, typically on the iPhone XS Max, you'll bring it down or XS, you'll bring it down on here. You have to bring the control center up from the bottom. In addition, no notch cutting into your content, but also a lot wider because the screen's wider, 16 by nine, the aspect ratio. So in a way it felt older, but in a way it felt pleasurable to use something that just feels classic Apple. So overall software being updated to the latest and greatest, having 3D touch and on the A plus kind of just felt modern. I mean, honestly, Apple keeps their older phones updated. So in the software front, still very smooth. A11 performs well. Three gigabytes of RAM is enough for the A plus and I'm just kind of used to the way it performs. So it was like you were right at home going back to an older phone after using a lot of these newer iPhones with the edge to edge screens. But I will say that I did miss gestures as not only the iPhone is going to gesture, so is Samsung, so is OnePlus, so is, you know, plenty of other Android phones. Almost every phone on the market now is using gestures. So I did kind of miss that a little bit when using this iPhone 8 Plus for my 72 hours. So when it comes to performance, here's the thing. The 8 Plus had the Apple A11 Bionic chipset. The A12 came out. Apple still wasn't even using all the power that is possible out of the A11 with their software. So what does that mean? That means right now the 8 Plus doesn't feel any slower than any of the other phones that are on the market right now, to be quite honest. I use this like Monday through Wednesday or whatever. Before the OnePlus 7, I got that phone and I, I'm telling you, I, I wasn't even thinking about, oh, I can't wait to try out the new performance because the A Plus was just fine. So right now, phones with A11 CPUs are just really still stupid fast at this point. So I should take a second to mention, you know, what has my camera experience been like trying this thing out again? And I gotta say, I do miss 
some of the really, really sharp details of some of the newer phones that launched a year after this as the smartphone industry really has been improving camera year over year. But what I still loved about the A Plus is that it had that classic iPhone, just pull out the phone, take a photo, and you know, you're gonna get a pretty good result every time. Also, the video is still remarkably smooth on the A Plus at 4K 60 frames per second. It was the first of the iPhones to do it, the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, then came the 10 later that year. But the 8 Plus still shoots remarkable video, uh, pretty good photos overall. I still think dynamic range, all that stuff has improved drastically on newer phones. But at the same time, I think if somebody bought this right now, they would definitely not be disappointed with the camera in the iPhone 8 Plus. Slow motion is also quite great on this phone as well. But really the star here is the 4K 60, which is still incredible for the 8 Plus. In those few days that I was actually challenging myself to go back to the iPhone 8 Plus, Apple actually released a video about how you will fall asleep before your iPhone 10R. If you've seen that commercial, you'll fall asleep before your iPhone 10R powers down. Well, I fell asleep every day before the iPhone 8 Plus powered down. I was finishing the night around 50, 60%. So before the 10R came out, the iPhone 8 Plus was one of my highest rated battery phones on the market. And that has changed because the newer phones came out, but that doesn't make this one a bad battery life. If it was the previous highest, that means that right now, if you buy the iPhone 8 Plus, you're going to have a phone that's easily gonna get you through a day. And I think with heavy use, this phone would actually get you through a day as well. Now, it isn't the highest capacity if you look at a spec sheet, but it performs admirably well especially the standby time. So if you have an 8 Plus, let us know your experience with the battery. For me, it's been phenomenal. So when we got the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, Apple brought speakers to the bottom and the top stereo speakers, and the 8 Plus only improved that. Now, the newer iPhones, the 10, the 10s, the 10s Max, sound even better than the 8 Plus, but it's slight. I mean, you would have to really know your audio, really be able to hear things like this, have a really good ear, as the iPhone 8 Plus still impresses, I think, with its external speakers. However, it doesn't have, you know, a headphone jack. So if you like a headphone jack, uh, you will be missing that. I did miss that using this phone as some other phones like the Galaxy Series has it right now. Uh, OnePlus doesn't have it, but the Galaxy Series still does have it. So that's it. We're here at the end of this video, 72 hours with the iPhone 8 Plus. It's been a good and bad experience. Good in that it still works well, so as the latest iOS version. I like not having a notch, and I think it has plenty of features. Where it was bad is that I kind of missed the gestures of the newer phones. I kind of missed that 120 hertz sample rate, and I kind of miss just having the better cameras of the newer devices, however, and the better battery life. However, the A Plus is still a really great iPhone, but the prices Apple is charging for right now is just not worth it in my book. Recommendation, if you still want an 8 Plus right now, I would recommend you get it third party or trade in an iPhone to get a huge discount on it or maybe see if somebody who just upgraded to one of the newer iPhones is selling their device. If you guys found this video helpful, entertaining, informing, do me a favor, click that like button for me. If you're new here, consider subscribing for more and let me know your thoughts on the iPhone 8 Plus right now. Nick here helping you to master your technology. Thank you very much for watching. It is very appreciated. I will catch you all in the next episode and peace.